Welcome to Homestead Reptile, and I'm going to talk to you guys about structure part two. This is going to be on body size. So w wild crested geckos weigh a lot less than our more captive bred individuals. So when they are first imported, they weigh between 26 to 38 grams. These were adult males. Adult females weigh between 32 to 45 grams. The largest reaching 52 grams. Now, 10 years of selective breeding have begun to make geckos weigh on average 38 to 56 grams and some impressive animals can weigh 60 plus grams. Now this is likely to be related to the abundance of food and slightly better diet, um, not having the amount of space they had in New Caledonia so they're not burning through as many calories and selectively breeding for just larger sized geckos. So an example of breeding for larger size animals would be the super giants. So a uh, normal leopard gecko weighs between 50 to 70 grams, that's a female. Males weigh between 60 to 80 grams. Now a super giant leopard gecko male weighs 110 grams and a female 90 grams. That's a massive leap. And leopard geckos have been bred a lot longer and they've been in the hobby a lot longer than crested geckos. So we can kind of suspect something like this will happen with people wanting to breed for a larger body. Now, super giants do have some health issues and a lot of basically ginormous forms of normal sized animals that people breed for a larger form do have health issues. They have reproductive issues or they'll have lifespan issues and other issues that go with just being abnormally large. Now, some breeders in the crested gecko world are starting to feel that there could be some negative effects breeding for larger and larger body mass. And we can see that some people have, some breeders have noticed that larger bodied animals have a harder time producing or being able to be as fertile as smaller bodied animals. There have been some reports. Now this could be either the animals that they're trying to breed are fat. So there's a difference between something being fat and something being big. So... I'll show you some examples of some super morbidly obese crested geckos. So a super morbidly obese crested gecko will have fat rolls everywhere. They're, they look bad. They have fat under their armpits. They have a lot of different problems going on. They'll have mobility issues, and it's not a healthy animal. And you should never breed a really morbidly obese or fat gecko. You're putting its life at risk by doing that. And I have two examples of geckos that are brothers. They're only a month apart and they have different body structure. So the smaller one in the back, they're only off by a few grams, but he has a leaner, lankier body that's more similar to that wild type crested gecko's body plan. And he has what would be a more desirable, bulkier, bigger body. So it's just to take into consideration that any gecko that might have a smaller body might just be taking after more wild type traits. And those geckos that came from the wild and that have been selectively bred um, have gotten larger. There are some people that want to keep those wild type genes going on. So they have first generation wild, second generation, third and fourth generation wild. Now pe breeders that breed these guys have noticed they do not reach those 45 gram weight that most people want to allow their females and males to get to start breeding. They generally weigh between 30 to 28 grams. And that's super teeny tiny. This male right here I have is 25 grams. So imagine having a gecko this size and being reproductively viable, but it happens because these animals from the wild never reached that weight. And in the fourth generation, that's four generations down, they never reached those weights of 45 grams but they're still reproductively viable. They can produce, they have long lifespans, and there are some females that are producing into their 18, 18s. So this is just an example of, just because you see it on the internet doesn't exactly mean it's true, because these animals that weigh uh, 30 grams, they're never going to get any bigger than they are. They're, they have more of the dominant wild genes, which the dominant wild genes want to be smaller and leaner, than the more captive bred bulky gene that wants to be bulky. Then you have just different body sizes. It's like you have people, you have shorter people, you have thinner people, 
you have bulkier people. It just really depends. And the wild type form is just a thinner, leaner animal because that's how they survived. So just because a gecko is smaller doesn't mean there's something wrong with it. But on the flip size, flip size, on the flip side, being too large could also have some problems. And some breeders are worried that, like those examples I gave you, the super giant leopard gecko, Great Danes, and I'll also throw in the Flemish giant rabbit, which do have health issues and have shorter life expectancies. They got a lot of different problems that wouldn't be there if they weren't as large as they are. Um, that they're afraid that the animals will have a short life expectancy and they will have reproductive issues and they'll have other issues. But we really won't know that if that's a, the case because these are new in the hobby. People are just starting to selectively breed them to be larger and to, you know, get that 60 plus to 70 grams. And those are, those are geckos that are few and far in between. Those massive geckos are really hard to find. And a lot of those really big 70 gram geckos are just super fat. So you really won't notice a life expectancy decline until like 2032, 2035. Um, these guys just have a longer lifespan and you'd have to have a lot of geckos to see if making them super sized shortens their life expectancy. But we have the example with um, the super sized leopard geckos. They've been in the hobby a lot longer and you can... You can look that they have some concerning problems because there's a difference between being big and then there's a difference of being too big because you have the super giant leopard gecko, but you have just a giant leopard gecko, which has is also a very large leopard gecko, but they have less problems. They're reproductively viable. They don't have the same issues as the other ones.